Hi everyone, this is the preview lecture for lecture 11. So in the previous lecture, lecture 10, we have discussed about three-dimensional infinite potential well problem. We will consider the same structure in today's lecture, lecture 11, but with a slightly different point of view. So let's first uh, introduce the concept of a sub -N. So previously, we have assumed that this condition, so the g-directional size L sub z is much shorter than x-directional size L sub x and y-directional size L sub y. So the eigen energy given by this expression is sensitively dependent only on these n values because this Lg is so small compared with other L sub x or L sub y. So think about this case. When we have L, M, N value, and let's say that this is the direction for increasing L, and this is the direction for increasing M, and this is the direction for increasing N. So by increasing L or M or N by amount of 1, we can find three different quantities. For example, this is corresponding to L, M, N plus 1, and this is L plus 1, M, N, and no, this is L, M plus 1, N. In this case, you can say that the energy of this point and that point or another point, they are more or less same or quite similar. However, we can think that there is a big difference between the energy of LMN mode and LMN plus 1 mode. So when you collect them in a similarity of energy, then we can find although they are grouped into one group, but this one introduces a lot different groups. Um, so that's the reason why different L values can be um, thought as different solvent. Although they are belonging to the same bands, however, internally, their energy levels are quite much different, so they are treated as just a substructure of the band. So that's the reason why they are called as sub-bands. So in this slide, I just visualize the concept we have discussed in before. So in this case, for given n values, we just draw L, M, N values. This is L axis, you know, this is M axis. So here we can see different sheets here and here and here. In this case, the neighboring energies in this plane are more or less quite close to each other. So we can find a well-defined group of energies depending on L, M pair. And starting from this one, we can find very continuous and gradual change of energy levels. Also, same holds for different of groups. For example, this group or that group, another group also have smooth transition when we change the value of L or M. However, when we have certain level and change its L values while keeping L and M values as before, 
then we can find actually there is a sudden jump of our energy. So in this case, it is difficult for us to categorize them into a large group. It's more convenient to introduce subgroups of our E sub L and M. So depending on the value of N, we can define many subgroups and they are called as, once again, subbands. So this is the concept we will keep from now on. So for given subband with the subband index n, then the n is the quantum number along g directional confinement. Okay, so in this case, the n determines the shape along the g direction and it is treated as if quantum confinement occurs only along the g direction and no quantum confinement along other directions like x and y. So we are considering now very wide, really infinitely wide plane along x and y. The periodic boundary conditions are applied to those boundaries. This periodic boundary condition is a typical trick to consider infinitely large system. So, when you introduce periodic boundary condition, our Schrodinger equation is slightly uh, modified. Although the Schrodinger equation itself looks just as before, but its boundary condition is different now. Previously, we had both of the wave function at 0 and the other n should vanish. But now we don't have this contribution or this condition, this condition anymore. So now we have just periodic boundary condition. So the solution of the Schrodinger equation with this periodic boundary condition is simply given by a plane wave. So, and here we have k sub y, and k sub y is given by 2 pi over l y and m. Please note that this m now can have any integer value regardless of the sign. So here, 0, 1, up to infinity. Please remember that when we solve the Schrodinger equation for infinite potential well, we had a similar expression sin ky y. However, in that case, the k had the value of phi over l sub y and m. Here we had 2 missing and the m value was just taking the natural integer number 1, 2, 3, 2, infinity. So in this sense, we have different values for k sub y. So when ky is by increased by 2 pi over ly, a new state can be found. This, uh, this observation will be used in the next slide. Now let's revisit the problem of calculating the total number. Previously, of course, we have calculated it. However, since we have introduced a new boundary condition, so we revisit the problem. In this time, we have a slightly different notation. Previously, we had L, M, M values all start from number 1. However, due to different boundary conditions, now the span of our L and M um, 
is expanded from minus infinity to positive infinity. So we have introduced a slightly different lower bound for L and M. In this case, when we change N, we have quite much different energy values. However, when you change M value or L value, that just introduce small change in the energy. We will treat this N summation as the outermost one, and this is corresponding to different sub N. And the summation for L and M can be regarded as the thing inside the subband. So let's just calculate only for a given subband and subband. In this case, n is a given number, and we just do the summation over minus infinity to infinity for l and m values. Now we have the summation over L and summation over M. However, this L summation or M summation can be converted into integral here and there. So how can we do that? If you remember, Kx is simply given by 2 pi over Lx n integer l. When we change the l by amount of 1, then our kx value will be increased by amount of 2 pi over lx. So, therefore, this number lx over 2 pi multiplied by dkx is corresponding to just counting number 1. So by adopting this conversion from summation to the integral, then now we have this form and we can collect all coefficient in front of our integral and after that we have quite a simple expression. So this is just double integral over kx and ky plane. And this is just expression for our energy E sub L and M. For the simplification is possible when we have the isotropic mass along x direction and y direction. If we have the same mass for x direction and y direction, then these two terms are just merged into like uh, half a square over e sub m x x and just a sum of squared kx and squared ky. And as you can see, this is just uh, given by the two dimensional k square. So now when we assume the same directional mass along x direction and y direction, now this simple this expression can be rewritten as just this relatively simple expression. And also the integral over kx and ky plane can be converted into radial direction integration and angular direction integration. So they should be identical. So now the integrand has no dependencies on the theta variable. So this theta integration can be easily converted as just number 2 phi. And now we have the expression like uh, this is just the same as before and now we have just to change our dk into d e sub xy here we have already used that e sub xy xy directional energy is simply given by half a square 2 mxx and k square 
So since we have used this expression, so now we have dexy equal to just um, mxxk dk. So now we can say this k times dk appearing here can be easily converted into dexy and normalization coefficient for this one. So this is just appearing here. So now we have found that if we have an isotropic mass along x direction and y direction, then the total number of electrons for the given cell band can be expressed as this simple single integration over energy axis. Oh, that is really great, but how about the general cases where m sub xx and m sub yy are not identical in general? So we will talk about it in the next slide. Okay, so before consider more general cases, let's summarize the lecture contents up to now. We are now considering two-dimensional electron gas because previously we have considered three-dimensional electron gas but due to small size along the g direction of the motion of our electron along g direction is effectively prohibited so now our electron can freely move only two-dimensional space so now we will treat it as a two-dimensional electron gas and its wave function can be now written as along g direction this is that of infinite potential well and along x direction and y direction they are just plane waves directional plane waves along x direction and y direction are just multiplied to construct the overall wave function and its eigenenergy can be written as this form of course this is depending on the shape of a potential along g direction and this is these are corresponding to the energy of plane waves and number of electrons per uh, cell band per spin simply given by this is called uh, this leading coefficient and two-dimensional k-space integral of Fermi-Dirac distribution function. So that is quite simple. And if we wanted to calculate the total number of electrons inside the system, then of course we have to make a summation over our subbands and consider the spin degeneracy. That will give you the total number of electrons inside the system. And now we have to consider the general case where m sub xx and m sub yy are not identical in general. So then it is really difficult to force to convert it convert this summation into just one single square of a certain k so that's a problem so in this case in order to follow the previous expression similarly we have introduced the coordinate transformation from our original kx and ky to kx prime and ky prime and happen to be we have introduced certain coefficient the ratio and yes at the first time uh, it looks quite strange but for a while let's do it together so this is the quantity we wanted to simplify oh however 
m sub xx and m sub yy, they are not the same, we cannot merge them. However, when you consider these two forms, then we can immediately find that um, kx square is simply given by d m x x k x primes square and also we can find k y square is given by m y y over m d k y primes square so by inserting these two relations into the left side of this expression we can immediately find that mm -hmm, this one now becomes half square 2 times m d and k x prime square plus k y prime square. So now if we define a new coordinate system like k prime coordinate system then now we can say d k prime square is given by this form. Yes, however, you know that this is quite arbitrary and we have to also take into account our integral. So, um, how can you do that? Um, Fortunately, since we have introduced just a linear relationship between kx and kx prime and ky and ky prime, so the integral of dkx can be easily converted into dkx prime. So how can we do that? So by introducing just a simple rule like like this so we can say only adding another leading coefficient is enough to transform our original integral into different integral in prime space so now you can see that compared with our previous expression here now we have previous expression in the original k space now we have primed k space kx prime and ky prime and here we have lx ly over square over 2 pi so this is the exactly same as before and here the only thing we have additionally now is just a certain coefficient derived from this transformation linear transformation and this is just the same as before however that is written as square of k prime the square of k prime can be easily treated as before so let's say that in order to make the life simple um how about the, um, set our md as just the square root of mxx and myy if we set our md by this in this way then the leading coefficient here now becomes a unity so they are gone it is gone so now our expression simplified like this this is as simple as our original expression now we introduce the polar coordinate and the angular direction integration is just uh, the angular direction integration contributes only number 2 pi and we have only directional integral now left. And just as before by setting the uh, xy plane energy as just this form now we can have exactly same form as before however previously we had mxx or myy in this general case md is written as just 
m x x m y y when x x and m y y equal to the m x x then it is just uh, reduced to our original expression so now we can find that this expression is really the general expression for arbitrary mxx and myy values so then how can we calculate this expression now we understand this is the really a general expression and uh, we have to perform this integration but fortunately for this a Fermi Dirac integration without any further coefficient depending on energy you know that here we have DE and this is just a Fermi function and we have no additional function dependent on our energy E so in this case this integral is called as a Fermi Dirac integral of order 0 why it is called order 0? Because here we have just a constant and this is e of 0, zero's power. For example, if we have to consider the integration over, for example, half and Fermi Dirac, then this integral is called the Fermi Dirac integral of order half. And if we have just energy itself, then this one is called as the Fermi Dirac integral of order 1. So we can find many different Fermi Dirac integral with different order, but right now we are considering the order 0 case. Fortunately, order 0 case has the analytic expression so let's uh, just uh, follow it mm, by setting this normalized expression then we can follow these uh, lines so I will just uh, leave it here please leave you mm, then we can find that this Fermi Dirac integral with order 0 is simply given by log of 1 plus exponential of eta and what is eta here this eta is given as just here so let me just summarize our uh, lecture up to now at the beginning of our class we have talked about the concept of cell band after that we have consider the actual way to calculate the number of electrons per cell band we have discussed about isotropic case and anisotropic case fortunately all of them can be merged into one unified form this is the unified form and here md is once again given as square root of mxx and myy so and this is the expression and total number of electron is given by spin degeneracy and summation of all solvents so here we have a matrix example so please try to calculate it following the matrix example and please note that all of this calculation is based upon that our formula level is assigned to zero electron volt and homework number 11 we have different conditions instead of formula level which is fixed to zero electron volt please change the formula level from minus 0.3 electron volt to 0.1 electron volt for each formula level you will have different electron density so just to draw a graph of your integrated electron density 
as a function of your formula value. Okay. <clears throat> the due is this Wednesday. I think that already you have the working code for um, zero electron volt. So the generalization with different EF values will not be very difficult to, to you. Okay. So see you Monday. Bye.